It seemed pretty clear from the outset that The Mandalorian would be indulging in western and samurai movie tropes, not unfamiliar Star Wars territory after all. But in Episode 6, The Prisoner, we got two less expected homages in one episode, heist and horror. <laughs> Despite a supporting cast that varies from terrifically bland to deeply irritating, it's another one-time experiment that makes me appreciate that we're getting something as willing to mess around with its own makeup as The Mandalorian. As befits its two-tone approach, The Prisoner is broadly split into two halves, one better than the other. The first is the heist itself. Mando reconvenes with some associates from the bad old days and takes on a hit-and-run rescue mission built around the fact that he's got the wheels, sorry, thrusters to make it work. Automatically you start thinking about blueprints, fraught gunplay, twists and betrayals, all of which we get. It's simple, effective and offers us a wildly different setup to other, more introspective episodes of the show, because of course, every heist needs a crew. Unfortunately, that crew is the episode's major failing. Bill Burr's Mayfeld, despite his nifty robot-arm-assisted third blaster, is a pretty flat villainous leader. Clancy Brown's Berg is as one note as you'd fear from someone described literally only as the muscle. Richard Ayoade's Zero is somehow more robotic than any other droid in the Star Wars universe. My response time is quicker than organics. And I'm smarter too. And Natalia Tenner's Gian might be the worst Mandalorian character so far. A mess of sneers, giggles, and absolutely nothing else. There's a bridge between charismatically villainous and just plain unlikable, and the prisoner doesn't cross it. If I was being kind, I'd suggest that returning director Rick Famuyiwa was building us up for the sheer catharsis of watching them all get variously beaten, shot, and captured in the more enjoyable second half. I'm not sure I am that kind, but the effect is basically the same either way. Once Mando escapes from his cell and becomes prison warden rather than prisoner, Famuyiwa suddenly shoots every scene like it's a slasher film, all red lights, strobes and blind spots. It's a lovely choice, able to give us more of our hero in action, using any and every tool at his disposal, while placing him in a very different light. Suddenly we're seeing Mando how his bounty targets see him, as a faceless, unstoppable horror, seemingly appearing from nowhere to take them, dead or alive. There's also the added bonus of splitting up the heist crew so he can take them one by one, which effectively makes them all shut up for a bit. Coupled with the ticking time bomb of the New Republic attack squadron we know is on its way to vaporise thieves and prisoners alike, it makes for a far more propulsive second act to the episode. That it ends with a space station being destroyed by X-Wings, each manned in a lovely touch by one of the Mandalorian's directors, is an excellent exclamation mark on the episode, an action flourish that manages to indulge our Star Wars reference fantasies without getting in the way of the show as a whole. Of course, it also marked this as another episode where Mando makes a bit of money, betters himself morally, and leaves again. With only two episodes of the first season remaining, it's becoming increasingly intriguing how this is all going to play out. Baby Yoda remains a combined comedy-slash-peril package, and watching him get dropped by Mayfeld absolutely felt like peril, rather than the galaxy-changing MacGuffin we expected from the start. Between our uncertainty about Grief Karga and Fennec Shan's deaths, the booted mystery at the end of last week's episode, and the fact that Mando captured rather than killed most of the heist crew, it may be that his rush across the galaxy is more about the show accruing as many enemies as possible, leading to a truly gigantic potential showdown, rather than him heading towards some as yet unspecified end goal. Whatever the reasoning, Episode 6 was a worthy diversion. Another excuse to uncover an unseen bit of galactic culture, another opportunity for the Mandalorian to try some new genres on for size, and yet more reasons for Mando to show off his scrappy, always entertaining approach to combat. The Mandalorian continues to be unafraid to reject TV's current obsession with novelistic arcs, preferring a comic book approach, always offering a beginning, middle, and end. It remains worth celebrating just for that. <laughs>